All right. Uh, took a little break. Not planned. I guess I'll explain for those that don't know. Um, so... Oh, this is more difficult than I expected. Okay, so uh, last week, my granny passed away. Uh, she was 93. She was fucking brilliant. I can't. I, I don't usually swear that early, but she was so great. And um, yeah, she sadly passed away. And it's been a bit of a shock to me and my family. So making videos is quite difficult. So I just didn't make any videos. Uh, for those that knew on Twitter and sent me messages of love and support, I appreciate it a lot. And for those that didn't know... Sorry I didn't let you know on YouTube, it's just, you know, some things can be more important sometimes. Uh, so yeah, now you know, hopefully this video is uploaded and you can see it, and we carry on with Stuttgart and the adventure we've got going on here. If you don't remember last episode, well, let's introduce you to what's gone on. So we've left Dresden, we've come to Stuttgart, and post-winter break, uh, I was very busy in the transfer window. We left it on the brink of winter break in the transfer window. We're now at the end of January, and things have happened. Now you can see I'm on the transfer page then. Let's take a look at what's happened. Uh, we've we've sold quite a lot of players, which, well, not a lot, but players worth some money. Uh, Grik has gone already. I think he was already scheduled to leave. He's gone for, uh, for around 8 million. I think it is rising to around 12, which is good. Such a midfielder. Decent player, but um, to get him out and to bring players in that we actually want is, is quite helpful. Uh, Nitzel is another one. Alexander Nitzel, 5 million to Freiburg. That that's good money. He's not worth that. Hugo Basto uh, off the Aston Villa sold for 1.7 million. Wasn't really featuring in the Stuttgart side this year, so it was quite nice to just be able to sell him on. Uh, Emil Forsberg, a player that I did highlight at the start of the uh, the Stuttgart journey, is saying I'd quite like to move him on. 60 grand a week. We did move him on. 1.1 million off to Hertha. Has been a decent player for them this year, but it's not enough. You know, they're not playing well enough to justify this anyway. And then finally, uh, Valentino Vujinovskik. Vic. Oh dear, it's back again. Uh, he's also gone then to Gruith Firth. So, all in all, the real story from that is we brought in around 15-ish million. A little bit more than that. So, so we did alright. We then went out then and spent 18 million. We've still got 7 million to spend if you want to, but we spent, uh, spent around 18 million. Let's introduce you then to the names on the screen. There's already, we'll start with him. Florian Altenberg. There he, there he is. Um... He's back in my hands. So there he is, Florian Altenberg. Uh, didn't cost me that much, one million. Stuttgart, Stuttgart wanted him. Dresden weren't bothered. He's ours. Still hasn't scored a goal. So maybe that'll happen one day. I've actually sent him, uh, well, I'm going to send him if I haven't already, to the Stuttgart uh, second team for the rest of the season, then bring him in at the end of the year. Now then, we made a few other signings, signings of which I'm very, very happy about. Uh, two regents, so players you won't have heard of before. But the first one, Oriol Mangala, is a player that you may well have heard of. 25 year old Belgian, starts at Anderlecht. I'm sure it'll be familiar to a few of you. Looks very, very well rounded. Of course, we saw Grik off to Swansea. We've brought in this guy, three and a half star current ability. 25 years of age has been capped by Belgium by the way 35 grand a week so quite an expensive contract but looks to me to be as I say the complete midfielder extremely well rounded plays as a playmaker and um, I'm going to try and play a similar system to what we had at Dresden and this was the sort of player we needed to fill that void you might remember last episode, such a midfielders weren't good. We've brought a couple in. Uh, we'll go straight to the other one we've brought in, and then we'll come to Root van der Mijl, which needs a nickname. Uh, Yoshimitsu Hasaka. Boom. That's, that's said quite well. Japanese international. 50 caps at 21. 50 caps at 21. Yoshimitsu. We could just call him Yoshi. Now, I don't think that's a fair. He's literally got the name Yoshi. And of course, uh, an N64. Mario. Yoshi. Yoshi. There we go. Loved Yoshi. So Yoshi's been brought in. And um, central midfielder plays. So, well, not say central midfielder, more defensive midfielder, defensive playmaker, to be more exact. 16 passing, 15 first touch, really good across the board. Physical's fantastic. 5 foot 11, so decent height for this position too. Uh, has been at FC Hiroshima, and uh, yeah, he's done all right for them. Assists and goals, despite being a defensive midfielder. We've brought him in to play just behind our midfield too. Sadly, though, currently aware on international duty, so you won't see him play today. I know, I built it up, he won't even play. And then finally... Bit of a strange place to spend 7.5, rising to 9 million. But a right back. Wout van der Mij from Hirnveen then. Kaboom. This is why. Uh, for, like I mean, physically fantastic. Mentally very, very good. And technically has got the attributes needed for a right back. First touch is good. Marking, tackling, also very, very good. Heading's not the best, but he's a full back. It doesn't matter that much. And uh, yes, he's been brought in then. Dutch under-21 international. Plays quite a lot for her and Veen. We've brought him in. I think, in terms of full backs now, we've got this guy, Wout van der Mies. <laughs> I don't know if that's me. That's just, that's just me 
Like, which isn't a word or a name, is it? But he's playing then at right, but I think he's super. I think he's a superstar. And anyway, with those additions, then this is what we've got on our on our plate currently. Uh, as mentioned, then Yoshi can't play, still on international duty. But when he comes back, he will fit in where Tomasin is having to fill in at the moment. Adrian Tomasin, he's not the greatest defensive midfielder in the world, but for now, he'll have to do a job. And the rest of the team is looking rather well rounded, I have to say. Stefano Cimenti then in goal, uh, the regen who I think could be the Italian region who I think could be the keeper here for a little while longer got great potential ability already got great uh, current ability a superstar in goal uh, we've got then Van Dam is <laughs> uh, the right back uh, Kara Koloshi oh that's difficult mm, that needs a new name I think we, we, we debated changing it to PK didn't we We'll do that now. I'm not going to be able to say that every time. We'll, we'll put it as that, though. PK. There we go. PK. That'll do. Like Gerard PK, but spelt P. K. Like Peter K. In many ways. Garlic? Bread? No, never mind. Uh, Inglet is going to be next to him, who I think actually probably one of the better players in this side and will continue to develop. He's currently valued at 2.8 million. That'll be going up. Not, this is winter break. This is why it's going down. I think that's probably why it's going down. Uh, Oscar Laffer on the right. Well, I say like we've brought in a, a superb right back. We've already got a superb left back. The Texas International is uh, is going to play there for us all for the rest of the season. Already showed you Tomasin, Mangala's there too. Schneider, uh, the left sided central midfielder. I tell you what, it looks a lot worse when they show the attributes going down. Like, it looks good there, doesn't he? Looks far better. Uh, left sided, tacky midfielder is going to play as the playmaker in the midfield with the next to a box uh, box to box in Mangala. We've then got Almending. On the, that's such a great name. Daniel Almendinga on the right-hand side. And then on the left-hand side, Tom Brenner is going to be there. Uh, with up front starting for now, at least, is going to be Hoffman. Uh, I'm hoping if we can get the goals out of him, then he'll be our first choice for the rest of the season. If not, though, we can call upon the services of Schaffer, who is on loan from Red Bull Leipzig. So, that's that's that done. So, now you've seen the team. Now you're reintroduced. Let's, uh, let's get into a game, shall we, and see which player is going to stand out as we progress further. Our instructions, then. Uh, we're going Going with a very similar system to the Dresden formation. High tempo, high closing down, or more close down, as I say. Shorter passing, exploiting the flanks, looking for the overlap, and retaining possession. It's possession-based, but a little bit more attacking, I like to think. Anyway, let's get involved then. Let's see how we get on. It's uh, our first game of, of our new home, and it's Red Bull Leipzig. So let's see how we get on. Right, I've got no idea how this is going to go. I've not played the save, I mean, for reasons said before, for a while. So I, I don't remember if we're... Are we good? I don't think we're that good. But hopefully this week I can get to know them in the back end of the season. That's the idea. Right then, I'll do part of this. I'm, I'm very interested to see how Dresden do without me. So every, every day I'm going to be checking, see how they're getting on in their fixtures. I really want them to go up. I think that's the main thing. I want Dresden to go up and meet me in the Bundesliga. Right, we owe them after our last game. I, don't, I wasn't here for it, so that's a silly thing to say but they've all responded well and uh, i'm going to tell them i have faith in them right then as things get underway here let's see how we get on they are very or they're a rival in the league we're on 17 points then a little bit off uh, the safety area or the danger area i should say 17 points 13 obviously is enough to be in the drop as things stand and us and red bull stand very very close together so the first shot wide though and uh yeah not too bad now, i do want to say i was mentioning at the start i do want to say again though um thank you so much for anyone that saw my tweets and referenced uh them and said send their condolences and, and said sort of you know you're not alone this sort of thing when someone passes away he means a lot to you um i appreciate that it's nice to know that while you watch my videos on football manager at the end of the day you still can recognize that sometimes things are more important than this and um it meant a lot to know that so many people messaged i showed, I showed a lot of my family the amount of messages that came in in like a show of support and i think for them it was quite comforting to know that we're not alone in this that's annoying uh but yeah i as i say i appreciate it a lot um yeah, I just wasn't in any state to make a video, really. Uh, now, now we are. Kind of, kind of wish we weren't making a video because, <sighs> god damn it. Well, they've scored a free kick. I mean, it's a good free kick. Uh, keepers not got near it. So as time ticks away, um, we we're going to be at half time. I'm, I'm tempted to to make radical change. I'm going to get aggressive, I think. Show me something else in the second half. They seem motivated. Now, of course, they're a team that have been struggling. I mean, I should mention, actually, we played a few friendlies with this lineup. I'm beating in the friendlies. So get your act together. Problem is, what sort of changes do we make? I think we might very simply put Schneider further forward, bring some Assen further forward, 
And I think that might, that literally might be it. I mean, it's not a great, it's not a massive change, is it? All right, yeah, we'll do that then. We'll try and get Schneider more involved with Hoffman up front. Hoffman is the man who should score the goal. He's very similar to Hein at Dresden. He's the, he's the kind of guy that will get on the end of things, make things happen. As uh, Brenner with a free kick. Oh my, well, it's, if he's planned that, it's brilliant. It's deflected off the wall. It's gone into the corner of the net and it's 1-1. It's not the comeback I was expecting, but we'll take it. You can see the wall's very neatly positioned there. Brenner steps forward deflects it off the head of one of their men, and it goes in, which is a, it's a skill. Now, what I am noticing is possession's very good. Pass accuracy is also very good, up in the 84, 85%, 58% possession so far, which means they're already they're already adapting to the tactic, which is good. It's, it's what I want to see. All right, time's ticking now. There's about 10 minutes left to go. I feel like we should just go for this because we're in a situation where we've got to take risks to get out of this scenario. Yeah, a point's great against Red Bull, but to beat them would be extra special. They would move us towards Augsburg and Frankfurt. So, now, if I knew the bench, that would be useful. Is Dunkel any good? Let's get Dunkel. His delivery is outstanding. Let's get Dunkel on for Brenner. Joel Linton sounds like, I must want to call him Clinton, he attempts overhead kicks. I'd love to see one, Joel. Let's get Joel out there. Target man. We can, we'll can. we play slightly more direct for the final few minutes. We're going to go, did you like that philosophy? Let's ruin it. We're pumping it into the box. All right, 10 minutes to go. Joel's on. Joel Linton. Clinton cards. Joel Linton cards. Let's go. I'm not, I'll am not. i be honest now, I'm not expecting too much from a direct tactic towards the head of Joel, but... If it works, he'll be a hero. Time's ticking down. There's no no highlights since that change. Not only has Joel Linton cards come on, he's got injured, which is not ideal. And um, part of me now thinks we should have kept it just as it was because it it would seem to work, didn't it? Joel Linton now is he? Well, uh, that's it's not. You never get a second chance to make a good first impression, Joel. And um, as things stand, I'm unimpressed. Unless, of course, you Thomason. There's no way. Tomasin! Oh my god! Schneider! It's I mean it's a minute and a half after time. I take it all back, Joel. You were the link in that, and Schneider puts it in. I, that was so unexpected. Tomasin takes a shot from distance. The keeper, I mean, he's all ends up trap. And, and it's a it's a shot from Schneider from close range. We've gone for it. And we've got the goal. When I said pump ball into box, I didn't think that meant shoot. Well, I never. We're in the 94th minute of the two minutes added on. And we've got ourselves a goal. I mean, oh, that felt good. I mean, maybe times are changing. Red Bull 1, Stuttgart 2. And I, oh, well, I never. There we are then. We were 1-0 down. We fought back and we're up to 11th. Europe is ours. It's not ours. We've got 19 points from 18 games. It's not ours. Or ours. Now, of course, there is some uh, room to still make a couple of transfers. Hopefully, by the next time you meet, Yoshi will be back for international duty. So, we'll see this team play at full tilt. Uh, we've, we've got an interesting couple of games coming up. Obviously, I'm not going to show them in, on, on the video. Uh, but we've got Bayern and Darmstadt. I think the next games we're going to show, we're going to meet Augsburg and uh, Mönchengladbach. I think they're probably the best ones to show based on league position and what not. You can see Mönchengladbach. It was going so well. In sixth and uh, Augsburg just behind us. So, it's a nice mix of above and below. Uh, right then, if you enjoyed today's video, please do drop a like. Uh, if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel and we'll love with care from Little Benji. Thank you for this week. It's uh, It's been nice to know people have got you back in times of trouble. So, uh, yeah, goodbye.